Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and uh, I have this dead ARP Omni in for repair and uh, I thought we'd make just like a quick video of getting it up and running but also um, I want to dispel a few uh, misconceptions or uh, myths that I see floating around with respect to ARP Omnis um, and ARP synthesizers in general that are sold online as, you know, parts or repair. Uh, usually they say, you know, probably an easy fix for, for someone who's handy or power supply issue, power's on, no sound, all these types of things. And uh, they make it seem like uh, it will be uh, very simple for you to, to get this synthesizer up and running. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at this one and we'll see just how easy it is uh, to get this up and running and what we need to do to get it um, up and running reliably. Those are two different things. So uh, let's turn it on. Uh, so power light turned on with a little bit of a delay there. but uh, So uh, if you see this on eBay, someone will say, power's on. No, no sound. Power's on, no sound. Um, so this power light means absolutely nothing. And uh, we'll open it up and, and we'll take a look at, uh, at why. So I've got it open and it looks like it's been repaired in the past, but it looks pretty much original. See all these little blue blobs and red blobs? Uh, those are tantalum capacitors, the original tantalum capacitors. Very failure prone stuff. These are the original filter capacitors uh, for the power supply. I see some capacitors that have been changed in the past, probably uh, because they failed. Um, but otherwise, it looks, I mean, very, very dusty, but it looks pretty original. So, the first step that we usually do in a repair job like this is we check to see if the uh, power rails are. are present and correct. So uh, we have the connector for the power from the power supply coming over and it enters the uh, lower voicing board here and then it's sent to the other boards. Uh, but this is the accessible spot for, for testing the power supply. So I'm going to power the synthesizer on again and uh, I'll test the plus 15 volt rail. I'll try to do this without blocking the, uh, the meter for you to see. And we have zero volts there. So I'll test the minus 15 volt rail. And uh, hopefully you're seeing the meter there. 0, 0.00 volts. So before we open the keyboard, uh, we, we, before we open the synthesizer, we saw the power light was on. So, we, so this would have probably been described as uh, powers on, no sound. Now we've measured the power supply voltage uh, and we see that there's no volts. So, at this point, it would be sold as power supply issue, probably an easy fix, right? Because we just measured the voltage coming out of the power supply and at zero volts. So it's a power supply issue. Look how small the power supply is there. It's got to be easy to fix. There's only a handful of parts. Easy and cheap fix. You'll have this perfect ARP Omni uh, probably, you know, for, for a cheap repair bill, right? No. So um, I've still got the synthesizer on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this, because what I usually find is there is the power supply isn't putting out the correct voltage, not because there's a power supply issue, but because there's a short somewhere in the synthesizer that's pulling those rails down. I don't usually see it at zero volts exactly. That's, that's a little sus, as my kids would say. But yeah, I mean, you, you can't assume that it's a power supply issue unless you test the power supply separately. That's why I have a video, a separate video on how to test the power supply. But I'll, I'll show you that real quick now. We've taken, we have the synthesizer powered on, sticking the uh, black lead of my meter into the thick black wires, uh, thick black wire there in the housing, and the red wire here into the, the uh, red lead into the thick red wire. 
the thinner wires are the sense lines for the power supply. They're jumpered together when connected to this board, but when you have it disconnected, it's not. So you have to measure the thick wire. And, but we still have zero volts. So I'm going to go over to the negative 15 volt rail and also zero volts. So there actually is a power supply issue in this one. Um, whether that's the cause or the effect, uh, we'll, we'll see in, in just a minute. So now it's time to round back to the, the power switch. So I, um, I said you can't rely on the power switch to indicate whether there's power or not. In fact, here there's zero volts coming out of the power supply, yet the power lamp was, was on, and why is that? So um, I'm going to point from a little bit of a distance because I have got it turned on still or plugged in. But uh, I also have a video on explaining the mains wiring system of the ARPS. Basically, here's the power cord from the wall coming in. Black is the hot, uh, white is the neutral, and the green is the ground tied to the chassis there. So the black wire comes over here, the hot wire comes to the back terminal where it's just tied to this black wire coming up to the switch. Then it comes down as a white wire and uh, goes into the into the main transformer through the fuse. Uh, this red wire is tied to the neutral. So this lamp is, is ahead of the transformer, it's ahead of the fuse even. So this light, as long as the bulb is good and the power cord is good, when you turn the power switch on, the power switch should illuminate. So you cannot rely on that to tell you that the synthesizer is powering on. Um, actually, on, let me zoom in here. See, the interesting thing is there's no, no fuse there. So uh, normally there's a fuse soldered to the Yes, soldered. I am in America. I'll say soldered. If you are in another country, you can say it differently in your country. But that's how we say it here. To those people who comment about this uh, every time I say solder. So there's a soldered fuse there. Um, so basically this, after it goes to the switch, goes through the fuse and then into the main transformer. And uh, I don't see it there. Um, I don't know if someone, like, bypassed it under the board by soldering a wire or something like that. We'll uh, take a closer look at it in just a minute. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, I rarely see the fuse blow on these ARP Omnis. So you'll have tantalum capacitors that are shorted, smoking, flames shooting out of it. I've seen all that. Um, yet the main fuse will never blow. Um, I don't know if ARP designed that intentionally, but what usually stops the excess current is the current limiting on the uh, voltage regulator rather than the main fuse. So I rarely see the main fuse blow. Why that one is missing or bypassed, I, I don't know. Okay, so I've set my meter up here. And I'm going to try to see if, like, the fuse is being bypassed. So after the fuse, it, it comes into the uh, primary side of the, the transformer and then comes out here on the secondary side of the transformer. So I can actually see the traces here under the board where these, these green wires, the white one is the center tap, the green one is the, um, are the, the secondaries. And uh, I can see where they're connected to these rectifier diodes. So if I stick have my meter on AC and I stick it here, I should be able to see the voltage across the secondary, but it's like three millivolts dropping down to nothing. So so yeah, the, the, there's no power to this transformer, so the power supply can't work. So the fuse is missing, it's not being bypassed. That's why this isn't powering on. But why is the fuse missing? So the fuse would be missing if there was a short circuit that was causing enough um, current draw to blow the fuse. 
Um, let's actually measure resistance across the power rails. So we can do it both on the power supply and the, uh, the load here on this connector. Um, and we can see if there's any shorts. Um, they'll measure you know, low or, or, or zero ohms. So on the power supply, uh, I'm going to measure resistance here across the 15 volt rails, 38,000 ohms and rising. That's reasonable. On the negative 15 volt rail, 50,000 ohms and rising. That's, that's reasonable. So let's take a look at the load. I'll measure uh, resistance across the 15 volt rail and 0 0.5 ohms. So there's a, there's a dead short there on the 15 volt rail. Let's check the minus 15 volt rail. I don't know why I just swapped leads, it doesn't matter. 440 ohms, so that's probably reasonable. But we have a, we have a dead short on the uh, 15 volt rail somewhere in the synthesizer. So, should we see if we can find it and remove it? Um, normally, um, if it were a power supply issue, we could just hook the boards up to a uh, bench power supply. I would not bypass um, the fuse and, uh, or waste another fuse uh, by using the original power supply. And maybe we'll do that um, after we, we find the short. But I think we can find the short probably without powering it on. Um, that way we don't damage anything else. But at this point, it's... Uh, Good to mention that I don't usually go about repairing ARP Omnis this way. Uh, ARP Omnis and most synthesizers in general really take a methodical approach. And I, I've, I've showed you know, this in, in other videos for the ARP Omni. I go through and replace all the tantalum capacitors. Um, at that time you can do a visual inspection of the boards to make sure there's no burned up parts, uh, damaged parts or missing parts. Um, the sliders, let me zoom in on the sliders. So the sliders, we can see there's a good amount of uh, dust build up just around them. You can imagine how much stuff got in them um, over the uh, 45 years that this synthesizer has been alive. The trimmer is pretty dusty too. Um, but a lot of the signal path passes through the sliders. It's not like a CPU is scanning them and, and, uh, and it's running through a DAC. This is, the signal path passes through these sliders. So if, a, if the um, slider is scratchy or, or um, continuity between the wiper and the uh, carbon track and conductive track is interrupted, uh, you're going to lose your signal path and that's going to be a source of problems. So, Dealing with the sliders, you know, either replacing them or refurbishing them, um, that's also typically a mandatory before I even power, power on an Omni uh, because it, it causes so much problems. And then also the key beds, you can hear the packing bushings on this one. Um, it, for it to work reliably, um, you, you're going to need to clean the, the key contacts and, and the bus bars. But... Uh, for the purpose of getting this up and, and working, just see if it can make sound, I think we can, you, you wouldn't need to do that. So let's see if the short is in the top half of the keyboard. Um, so these boards up here, plus the phaser, which is connected through this cable, or if it's on these two boards at the bottom. So I'm going to, to take this cable here and disconnect it. Now I'll measure resistance on my 15 volt rail. And you see it's gone up to 18,000 ohms, 18 kilo ohms. So um, basically we've narrowed the short down to one of these four boards. We've eliminated these two boards. We already eliminated the power supply. Since it's a, a low hanging fruit, we don't need to pull any screws. Let's disconnect the phaser um, and see if the short We'll have to connect this back. See if the phaser is the one holding our short. 0 0.4 ohms. No, not the phaser. Well, 
there still could be a short on the phaser. I take that back. There still could be a short on the phaser, um, but there's still a there's definitely a short on one of these three boards. So let's press on. So I'm gonna remove this board or unscrew this. Board. There's slider caps on them. I'm gonna need to take them off. Actually, this is super dusty. I'm gonna clean it before I start moving things around. Okay, so I disconnected this uh, ribbon cable to the synthesizer board. This is the board with the voltage controlled filter. And I'll measure again the resistance on the 15 volt rail. And it's half an ohm, so sure it's not here, it's on one of these two boards. So probably the next thing that we'll do is we'll free the uh, string control board, the small board, up and um, disconnect it. A friendly piece of advice is uh, you'll notice that there, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll, I'll take it off and, and show you. There is a black insulating washer on some of the screws. And that's because when ARP designed the board, they, um, they didn't take into account their mounting hardware. So without this insulating washer, when you screw the board uh, to the chassis, you're going to ground ch traces. Um, they don't use solder mask on their boards. so. You're going to ground some of the traces that shouldn't be grounded to the chassis and you're going to cause the synthesizer not to work. So when you take these out, pay attention to if there's an insulator or not. And if there's an insulator, I usually will mark the board with like a little eye or something like that um, next to the screw hole that I uh, take this off of. Uh, just so when I put it back together, I have a, a reminder of, of that's where it, it goes. Also, another friendly piece of advice is uh, when you're taking this board out, have the synthesizer completely unplugged. Uh, remember, the, the mains wire comes in here and there's a live um, 120 volts or 220 volts or whatever your locale has sitting right on that, that terminal there, waiting for you to uh, bump it with your screwdriver or hand or something like that. So. Um, have it unplugged, uh, that is live and it's ahead of the switch and the fuse. Okay, so let's unplug. Oh, that's gonna be this one, I bet. Let me unplug this. Come on, fella. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna set it out of the way. And We'll measure the um, the 15 volt rail again. So right now, only this board is is connected, and resistance there. Wow. Okay. So it's um, there is a short on this board, but let me show you this. So this is the string control board that I just removed. And you can see that there is an incinerated resistor here next to these two tantalum capacitors. And the board is all charred underneath. Doesn't look good. I don't think that will be working the way it should be. Let's see if we have a short on, uh, on this board as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look here. This is going to be our ground because you see how it, it would uh, touch the uh, standoff where that screw goes into. And then the 15 volt plus 15 volt would be uh, pin 14 of this CMOS chip here. So we go like this and... Uh... No, no dead short on the 15 volt rail. But there definitely is a problem and judging by how uh, this capacitor here looks forest green this one looks kind of dull, uh, dull, different green. I'm guessing that this, this tail end capacitor is shorted. But uh, so we, we've uh, 
pretty much identified that we have a short on this board, bad tantalum capacitor on the other one. So let's take this board out and see if we can uh, visually see the uh, source of that 15 volt short. is really stuck on there. So these uh, plastics uh, have a tendency to shrink. You use small amounts but they they can shrink over time and uh, this, these uh, Mark II style um, Omni 2 uh, style slider caps can can really get fused on to the old slider shaft and, and actually replacing them with the replacement slider sometimes the uh, the caps don't fit and you need to uh, file or, or sand the shafts down a little bit uh, to get them to fit. Okay, so let's see real quick I'm going to leave this board uh, connected here. Let's see if we still have our, our short on the 15 volt rail. We do. So now just disconnect this one board and it's gone. So short on 15 volt rail on the synthesizer control board. Let's take a look at it. So first of all, let's just make sure. So again, this you can see where the the nice big ground trace would be connected to the the, the chassis here, and then uh, I'll go on the uh, 15 volt rail here, and uh, 0 0.3 ohms. So there definitely is a short on this board. Let's see if it's the lowest of hanging fruit, and let's cut off this. Uh, this tantalum capacitor here. That is uh, the bypass capacitor, decoupling capacitor. Basically kind of just stores a little bit of energy uh, closer to the parts on this board to minimize the um, fluctuations in the in the power rail on this board. So let's see now. Uh, it doesn't matter which polarity. So let's go here and uh, whoa, take a look at that. 13 13.2K, so surprise, one of these tantalum capacitors was shorted. Fancy that. So I just cut this off. Um, I told you what this capacitor is used for. We can get away with powering the synthesizer on without this capacitor in here. It's not gonna make a world of difference. Um, but you can see if we have one of these shorted and, and probably two because of the, the string control board. Um, you can hopefully see why you need to, to get all these out um, of the synthesizer. So let's take a, a look again at the string control board at that um, burned up area. So here's the burned up area on the string control board. And uh, it's uh, one of these two 22 microfarad capacitors and the resistor that's sitting next to it. If we take a look at the schematic, um, this is uh, has to do with the uh, release time for the uh, for the strings. Uh, so if if one of these capacitors is shorted um, or the resistor is burned up, I wouldn't expect the uh, I'd expect to uh, I wouldn't expect the release control to work properly. Um, let's do this. Let's, um, let's just remove these two capacitors and, uh, uh, and uh, hook it up and, and, uh, and see where this ARP Omni stands. So again, this isn't the way I usually go about doing things. Usually before I power it on, I've replaced all these tantalum capacitors. Um, it's really a mandatory to replace the tantalum capacitors on these. Um, trimming these out is going to have a different effect than the um, 
uh, decoupling capacitor that I trimmed out on the synthesizer control board because this is this capacitor is actually used for some functionality. So um, here's the uh, the two. You can see that uh, one is nice and shiny. The other one is dull, probably from all the heat from having a short circuit. Um, so so again, I wouldn't expect the uh, the functionality that relies on this this to work, but we've hopefully removed the short, unless the resistor is also shorted. Um, but usually they fail open. So let's actually let's um let's measure this. Oh wow, it is a uh, charred all the way through and probably probably damaged these traces, but um. Yeah, I don't know that I'm going to get a good reading. Actually, I'm reading a, on the meter. I'm reading a 100, 110 ohms. Um, it's in circuit, so I take it with a grain of salt. But um, let's put this back together and uh, and see if if we can have this uh, ARP Omni power on and make sound. Okay, so I've loosely reattached the upper boards here. Uh, there's no point in reconnecting this uh, power supply. We know there's no fuse in it. Uh, and actually, I'd, I don't, I'd rather not use the internal power supply. I'd rather use a bench supply. Um, that way, if... Uh, I almost hooked everything up. Um, if there still is a problem, uh, we don't really burn anything out. We can use the bench supply to limit the current. So I'll show you how I hook this up. Um, and also how I hook this up, because you see now I've got it open on the bench. Uh, the jack uh, that the audio comes out of, uh, I can't plug a, a, a cable into it because it's, it's um, resting on the bench. So I'll show you how we'll set this up for testing. So I've got this hooked up with some alligator clip wires to uh, my triple output a bench supply. I'm going to use the uh, plus 15 and minus 15. These are adjustable outputs and you can limit the current. Uh, there's a third output which is uh, that has a higher amperage that that's for like 5 volts. And then I've got an alligator clip here um, to the uh, to the jack. So this is the high output uh, and I just have it clipped on to a, a quarter inch jack uh, I have the ground connected here, and then I've tied it to, to earth. So let's power on the bench supply. And I have a program saved for uh, plus and minus 15 volts. And I hear something. So there's not excessive current draw. I, I think I have it limited at uh, an amp on each rail. Oh, now we have a... Let's turn it off. So what happened there is we didn't have have uh, excessive current draw on any of the rails, and we heard some crackling noises, and and then you saw the um, the draw was up to uh, up to the amp limit, and the voltage had uh, dropped down because uh, it had dropped out because the uh, because there was a short. So hopefully this should show that there's no easy fix on this ARP Omni. I mean, we have all these tantalum capacitors here in the synthesizer. We found, you know, just, just going through finding the initial short, um, we, found, uh, we found at least two shorted tantalum capacitors. My guess is now there's a third one. And, you know, for the advocates of tantalum capacitors, this is a... This is a, this is a good supply. I mean, it's an older one, but it's it's a good one. There are no spikes uh, above 15 volts being put out there. All the tantalum capacitors in the synthesizer, they're rated for at least the 15 volts. Let's see this one that that we took out before. That's uh that sits on a 15 volt rail. It's got a 35 volt rating. So, um, you know, for the advocates of tantalum capacitors. Yeah, tantalum capacitors are great, uh, but it's not true that they only fail when they're exposed to over-voltage. 
these particular vintage tantalum capacitors in the ARP synthesizers and some other brands, Oberheim, Sequentials, they fail even though you're not exposing them to any overvoltage. And uh, they all need to be replaced. Um, there's no easy, easy fix of just, you know, we, we removed the shorted capacitor and a new one shorted. So the sellers that are saying, uh, you know, probably an easy fix, you know, power supply issue, power's on, no sound, they are full of it. Because in order to make this synthesizer work and work reliably, you've got to take out all of these tantalum capacitors and replace them with whatever your choice is. I mean, if you're a tantalum advocate, fine, replace them with a new tantalum capacitor. Uh, I choose electrolytic because I look at how they're used and there's no need for them to be tantalum capacitors in these cases. Um, but that's a personal preference. Um, uh, they all need to be replaced. And there's over a hundred of them. Um, you see there's 29 here. There's another one up here. There's one behind this connector. There's, a, there's one for each of the keys, one for each of the base notes. So there's another 20 under this board. But there's like 13 on here. There's some up here. A bunch on the upper boards. They're in the filter. It is a, it's a time-consuming job. The art boards uh, are of the lowest construction quality of uh, the major vintage synth manufacturers. They are um, um, very easy to damage the boards. Uh, Desoldering, uh, in particular, uh, pads and traces can get lifted e very easily um, because uh, there's no solder mask. Uh, they didn't plate their through holes, so if you have a pad on the bottom and there's a trace on the top and there's just a just the pad on the bottom, odds are that pad will, will come off when you try to desolder it. Um, I mean, I have practice with it and still every once in a while I'll, uh, I'll remove one of those those pads. So it's a time-consuming job and it's, it's really a labor of love. Uh, and that's why there is such a big difference in the value of a restored ARP Omni and a unrestored ARP Omni or, an, or a parts repair, repair not working ARP Omni is the amount of labor that needs to go into it to get it to work, to get it to work right, and to get it to work reliably. So hopefully that dispels some myths about the ease of uh, quick fixes being available for these ARP Omnis. Uh, it gives people, uh, hopefully the, the video gives people some uh, insight to see through some of the BS that uh, the online sellers of these broken synthesizers will use and the bogus representations that they'll make about how easily you'll be able to turn this several hundred dollar instrument into a couple thousand dollar instrument with just a simple fix because uh, it's just it's just not going to happen and that's why there's such a big price difference between the broken ARP Omnis and the restored ones um, so I'm going to go through this and and repair it the the right way um, and uh, I have other videos that show uh, that process. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel if you're not already or browse through my old videos and check them out. Uh, my name is Synth Chaser uh, from SynthChaser.com. Thank you for watching and have a great day.